Okay, now here is a trapezoid that's not a right trapezoid. Can you make a single cut so that you can reconstruct this trapezoid into a parallelogram? Because we know that we can find the area of a parallelogram because we know we can rearrange a parallelogram into a rectangle. Okay, well, hopefully we've done that. We're going to continue on. Uh, it turns out that the cut that we need to make is very similar to the cut that we made for the triangle with a right angle. Now I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm just going to cut it right up the middle. Okay. Not sure I'm getting this quite in the middle, but I'm not sure my angle is really great, but you get the idea. So here are the two pieces, and I can rotate this piece up here. Let me re-grab the thing. And there I have a parallelogram. Now, this isn't a right angle down here, and this isn't a right angle up here, but the angle here is equal to the angle here so that we do have parallel sides. Now, the picture, well, here's a picture. Here's our original trapezoid in white. We cut it down the middle. We take this green shaded piece. We rotate around up here, and we get the parallelogram that's outlined in red. We can then reform the parallelogram into a rectangle. We just trim off this piece up here and glue it on down here, rotate it around, glue it on down here, and now we have a rectangle. Again, the altitude is going to be B1, the, not the altitude, the, uh, yeah, the length of the rectangle is going to be our B1, which is the length here, our B2, which is the length here, so it's going to be B1 plus B2, and again, we have one half H for the width. So the formula that we obtain for a right trapezoid applies also to any trapezoid. You can do this with any trapezoid. Again, trapezoid having two parallel sides. Okay. Now we're going to go on and, and look at some characteristics of the circle.